so today we're going to have a look at winter twigs in the plant identification and perhaps the most iconic one of course is the horse chestnut you've got the sticky bud at the top on this terminal bud you've got opposite lateral buds and then as we go down the stem you can see here the leaf scars that shield that's left behind when the leaf petiole the leaf stalk falls off it leaves behind a scar the leaf scar and that is a key when you're identifying winter twigs and on the leaf scar there's often little markings where the veins were attached that's another key to identifying winter twigs then you've got the girdle scar here that's where uh, the year's growth has come from so that's the end of last year that's this year's growth and then you get markings down the stem little tiny little dashes sometimes sometimes they're circular uh, and that's the lenticels, the breathing pores, so they breathe sideways. And then some twigs are hairy and you've got uh, some different colours, some different, slightly different shapes. Some have got sort of ridges like the sweet chestnut, as some of catkins of course. So there's lots of different things, so hopefully by the end of this you'll have learned how to identify a range of common trees and you can test yourself there's a link below click the link below and test yourself to see how you're getting on and then of course we'll have another one next week and you'll hopefully build up your plant identification so at the end of it you'll be confident in identifying a number of plants anyway see you see you next time on the ash tree fraxinus excelsior it has these black buds which are opposite so very, very conspicuous. And some of the other ashes, like the manna ash, Fraxinus ornus, has brown buds. So that's going to be one of the biggest clues, opposite black buds on ash. On the sycamore, Asa pseudoplatanus, we have these green buds, which are opposite. So that's one of the key features, green opposite buds. Uh, you might also get some of the Samaras, sometimes we call them helicopters, and they might be hanging on. And of course they spin in the air at this time of the year, which is quite interesting, just to disperse. So green opposite buds on the sycamore Asa pseudoplatanus. So on the oak tree, Quercus roba, the English oak, one of the big things that you'll find is that the buds are in clusters at the tip. Okay, so you get the buds in clusters and you can see they're quite scaly, the actual way the scales overlap. Uh, the leaves themselves are alternate and you've got this lovely sort of brown color uh, on the oak. But the key thing is buds are in clusters and slightly rounded because of course cherries also have buds in clusters at the end, but they're more pointed and they're slightly more purple color. So that's the Quercus roba. So on to the beach, Vegas sylvatica. And Vegas sylvatica has these long pointed cigar shaped buds. So that's the big clue with beach. They're alternate and they're angled away from the stem. Uh, if we have the hornbeam, Carpinus spatulus, they're a little bit closer to the stem and smaller. But on beach, big cigar shaped got this uh, scales overlapping there you can see the brown and uh, the slightly lighter color um, so that's the beach and of course the bark of the beach is quite smooth so on the mountain ash Sorbus occiparia the buds are alternate most rosaceous plants are alternate and the actual bud itself is slightly hairy, kind of a silvery hair on it. So that's a big clue. And sometimes you'll see the sort of withered parts where the berries were. And there's not so much on this one, there's a little bit there, odd bits. And there's the withered, that's the withered bit where the berries were on the end, just here. And so that can also be a clue. And in this case, it's got the pinnate leaves still hanging on. Um, so that's the Sorbus Occiperi, the mountain ash, uh, silvery grey hairs around the pointed buds. Now on the London plain, uh, Platinus cross hybrida, it's also known as Platinus 
um, Acerifolia or there's also Platinus Hispanica, there's a whole range of them. Um, but on this one, the buds are uh, alternate on the Platinus. And if you look closely at the buds, there's like a circle at the base. That's the leaf scar where the petiole, the leaf stalk, was attached to it. So it leaves like a little ring around it. So that's a big clue to the London Plain. Of course, the other big thing with London Plains is the bark, because the bark of the London Plain peels, so you get the this sort of outer bark peeling to reveal new lenticels, new breathing pores, uh, which can obviously nice and fresh. So if it's been polluted, the old uh, lenticels fall to the ground and you've got new ones below it. So one of the other things on the London Plain is you have these big ball-like akeen, made up of akeens, these little fine seeds. And uh, so they hang down and you can see them here. There's quite a few on the London Plain. So that's very significant. When it comes to the lime tree, Tilia europea, you can see that the buds again are alternate. In this case, they're quite red. Sometimes they're greeny red, actually. And it zigzags, so it's got this sort of zig-zag pattern on the branches. So that's quite a big clue to limes. The lenticels are just little flecks along the stem. Very often on the base of the trunk they have what are called epicormic shoots. You can see here there's loads of shoots coming off the stem, so those are the epicormic shoots. You can often identify them from a distance when you see those epicormic shoots. On the larch they have these like little tiny lumpy bits, barrels, called polvinus. And uh, it's quite a straw-coloured stem. It's a deciduous conifer, the larch. And you can see here that we've got the cone, so you can tell on Larix decidua, decidua, obviously deciduous, loses its leaves, in this case, the scales are pointing upwards. If they were folded back on themselves, that would be Larix Kyan Fairy, the Japanese larch. And you can even get an intermediate one where it's halfway across between the Larix Decidua and Larix Kyan Fairy. So we've got straw coloured stems, these pole venice, these little barrels, and you've got the scales of the cone pointing straight up. And the hazel is renowned, it's got these beautiful male catkins on the front, but it's also got, if you can see it, the female catkins behind, which are scarlet in colour. If I hold my finger behind, hopefully you can see beautiful scarlet coloured female. And uh, it's a really nice thing to look out for at this time of the year. So you can see the buds on the hazel are alternate, got the catkins, you don't always see the female, but at some times of the year, usually around about the end of January, Feb, they will start to emerge and get bigger. So that's Coralis avalana, the hazel. So this is Prunus avium, the cherry, and you can see that on the cherry the buds are alternate and the terminals are in clusters, but they're much more pointed than the oak. And if you look at the bark of the tree, you can see that the lenticels go round in concentric circles. So that's one of the identification features of cherries from a distance. The lenticels are very, very conspicuous. So here we've got the walnut, Juglans regia, and you can see that on the walnut, it's got alternate buds. Um, if you look at the leaf scar, it's really interesting. So the leaf scar on a walnut is got a shape a little bit like E.T., uh, which is quite interesting. So you've always got unusual shape. And if you slice through the walnut, you will get a ladder through it called a chambered pith. So that's on the walnut, Juglans regia. So if you like the videos on plant identification, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button and there'll be another one out uh, next week so you can sort of build your plant identification knowledge. See you next time.